Welcome everyone to a, a video on enterprise security. I've gone back and forth and how I wanted to present this, but ultimately it's going to be a boring PowerPoint slide right here. And I'm just going to talk about enterprise security. What is enterprise security? And when you hear it, you typically hear that this is Splunk's SIM tool. I'm going to go into it when I've, as I've spent a bunch of time in enterprise security, I have come down to it more or less gives you seven capabilities that uh, it simplifies the process inside of Splunk. And the basic concepts are these seven items I'm showing right here. You've got correlation searches. Easiest way to think of that is a safe search. A correlation search is a search that looks for behavioral type stuff. It's an IDS alert. It's it's just basically looking for certain behaviors and it, it runs. Splunk comes out, enterprise security comes out of the box with over, they say 1400. It's all, it's all semantics, which you want to count. I see they actually in the config files, they mark them as correlation searches. There are like 852 in the last version. It's lots of them. It, they give you lots of ideas of how to build searches to look across host logs, network logs for behavioral based uh, potential bad. And it will then search those and create alerts for you. And they call those notables, uh, event notables and basically that leads you to the next stage you can take any sort of a notable and it goes into a ticketing system it has and I will show that really briefly you can come in and you can go to investigations here and uh, enterprise security and it's got a ticketing system I doubt I actually have any tickets showing at the moment yeah uh, which so it doesn't really give you a whole lot there that's an investigation we need to go to instant review Wow Anyway, we're off to a great start. Incident review, and so you can filter tickets, income your tickets, they drop down, they can be expanded. Um, yep, so here's like an alert. You can go into the alert, get data about the alert. And you'll notice they use that word notables, as I said, here's your alert. You have all these options that go with it to get under information, urgency. You can assign tickets. You can, you can grab a whole bunch of them all at one time. You can edit them. You can change their status. You can change their urgency. You can assign them. You can give a disposition. This is really nice. If you've got alerts that are firing, correlation searches, let's use the right term, that are creating a bunch of false alerts, you've got these capabilities. You can true positive, benign positive, false positive, false positive. I'm going to go in on a whole segment on this. Every one of these uh, topics I've got, I'm going to go into greater detail. This is going to be a video. Um, we're going to put a, a bunch of videos together and just look at the link down below. It'll show you uh, all the videos related to enterprise security. But anyway, so you've got the ability to hand ticket triage. And then you can actually go to investigations, which is the page I had, when you can't just quickly close, you need to do a bunch of data. It's got a great capability to store data, store artifacts, and be able to close these notables that were created by correlation searches. They also have what they call the risk-based approach. Risk-based approach is an amazing concept. Instead of looking at each individual notable, it can actually tag, every notable that comes in can be tagged to a risk object and a threat object. A risk object is the object that the notable occurred on, uh, such as if you have network traffic, it would be the destination IP. And the threat object would be the source, the thing that initiated the uh, notable. And it can tag it with a risk score. And then you can, there can be alerts that fire off, say, when you've had, when the risk score has hit 100 in the last day or 100 in the last week. And the concept is, it says, instead of looking at each individual notable, the forest and the trees analogy, you're, instead of looking at every tree, it's going to look across time and say, what are all the notables that are occurring upon this IP or on this threat object, and that will help analysts get a better idea. So as object as alerts start firing off on different IPs or entities is what they'll call it, whether it be a, a inventory item, a user, whatever, when to, a bunch of them occur within a, a period of time that you can define, it will throw up its own individual alert. I'm going to actually demo that. But then when you see the one single alert, it might have 150 notables in it. And it will then map it to MITRE. And so you can see, oh, well, there are some attacks here where there were re reconnaissance going on. There might have been some data exfiltration. And any individual notable was not going to raise the attention of the analyst. But when you see them all together, operating together, you get a different perspective. 
and it allows you to say, oh, I might want to look at this. And ultimately, it also helps reduce down alert fatigue. You can handle a whole lot more alerts by the risk-based approach. And when you close a ticket, again, it's not gone. It's still adding up a risk score when the things cross risk thresholds that you define they repop back up. It's a really cool, cool concept. Intel framework, you can download Intel from any location you want. This can hook to uh, stick servers, download feeds from other places. You can upload your own custom. It'll search through your, net, your logs and identify that Intel. Uh, you can also upload stuff and say, you know what? I saw this notable. I want to uh, add it to it hooks really all true star I, which is another splunk product that they bought i'm not going to go into that but you have the ability to uh, push out risk items that you create based off the things you're working it becomes part of the intel framework ingesting them in um it's just really it, it allows you to put a lot more context and take outside feeds to uh improve some of the information you're seeing on your network inventory collection uh, Splunk will allow you to identify assets and then give risk scores to them. And so when notables come in, it will look at it and say, oh, because you defined it, this is, a, this is a domain controller. An alert that fires off on a domain controller gets higher priority, higher urgency, higher risk score than something that fires off on an everyday uh, workstation. You, you can t basically take your inventory, say what its purpose is, and arbitrarily assign it higher risk scores, and thereby every time an alert or uh, information goes off, you'll know that. Also, when you see your notables, you see alerts, whatever, it will add that inventory information into your metadata so you'll know immediately, oh, I'm looking here at a domain controller. I'm looking at a database server. I'm looking at this or that. You have to collect that information. It doesn't just magically do it for you, but if you have your inventory or a means to collect inventory, it will help you in that. Great tool. Data models. I put data models. I also go data acceleration. The concept is... Uh, this enterprise security is to take all these different data sources together. And so you might have a Palo Alto uh, a firewall, you might have Corelight, Zeek, network traffic, host-based alerts such as Windows events, uh, system logs from Linux. And while they carry some of the very same information, say I want to go see network traffic, they're going to have different source types, different field names, and a data model says these are common types of data, network traffic, DNS traffic, web traffic, authentication traffic, uh, uh, encryption, um, inventory. It'll take all those models and it'll say let's use the same common names and you mar you take a, you do do the work you get them what they call sim sim compliant common information model compliant so that every source of data you have matches the uh, matches the fields outlined in the data model and now you can search across all of your data i can say hey i want to know if i've seen this IP address as a source IP. It will. You can look at the data model, and it'll look at the Palo Alto logs you have. It'll look at your Corelite logs. It doesn't matter what they're called because you you uh, alias them into the same common names, and now you can search across all those different logs without knowing what each one is called. They can uh, people can call their uh, logs anything they want. That's the nice thing about logs is. Logs have a million different names. Uh, if I were to say all the ways of identifying a source IP and network traffic, you're going to get lots and lots of examples across many logs. Data models help solve a lot of that. And so enterprise security, you can use data models anywhere, but enterprise security rela relies highly on these data models to do all of its correlation searches and triage and deep dives on information. And so it's there. And then SOAR integration. You can do SOAR Phantom. You don't need uh, the Phantom product, but let me tell you, if you uh, have enterprise security, you can easily send your alerts to, you can take a correlation search up here, send it to SOAR. SOAR will run some magic, pull some stuff up. It might suit, oh, I can close this ticket. SOAR will then write back to enterprise security and say, close the ticket or update the ticket or add this information. And so they work really well so that you can you know, further speed up a lot of your triage and stuff like that. SOAR is a great platform. I'll put a video down, a link to stuff down below uh, for my SOAR, the stuff I've done on SOAR. It's it's great. You don't need it. But again, let me tell you, if you're paying already as a company the money for Splunk, 
and you're not using enterprise security or SOAR Phantom, talk to your sales reps and see the cost. As far as costs go, based off what you're paying for Splunk, SOAR and enterprise security, you might be surprised at how little it costs. It's really not that expensive in the whole cost of Splunk as a, as a, as a product. And so take a look into them. Anyway, uh, we're going to be going through, as I said, I'm going to cover each one of these topics. Uh, please look at the playlist below. There's going to be a lot more content. I'll actually show each of these seven items in depth. I can already tell you it's not going to be seven more videos. There's going to be a lot more videos. Some of these you cannot cover in just one simple video. Um, I have searched and searched the internet. There is not a lot of uh, a lot of videos on Splunk Enterprise Security. And so that was one of my goals while doing this is to build a tool that if you don't have a lot of understanding of enterprise security, you can come along to this tool. You can come look at these uh, this playlist and get a lot of the information so that you can be up and running. And as I always say, move from being a uh, lame analyst to a Splunk Ninja. I hope you will go and look at the playlist below and follow these videos. Anyway, hope to see you around.